humanity has distanced itself from disease. As we migrated from the tropical rainforests to the savannas six million years ago, we escaped the clutches of many pathogens. This was because, to a pathogen that loves moisture and heat, the dry, high temperature variance environment was tough to survive. And around 1.8 million years ago, humans made a discovery that would have us saying farewell to a good chunk of pathogens once again. That discovery was fire. With fire, humans could enjoy germ-free meat. In other words, it was much safer to eat. Richard Wrangham, professor of evolutionary biology at Harvard University, attributes this to a safety revolution forged in fire. And armed with the incredible medical technologies of the 21st century, we've made remarkable progress conquering one disease after another. However, with new viruses like SARS in 2002, a unique influenza strain in 2009, Ebola in 2014, and MERS back in 2015 popping up all over the world, it seems humanity's battle with these microscopic maladies is far from over. What's even more shocking is that this is basically a problem of our own making. Wait, but that doesn't make sense. Why would we do something like that? If you want to know, watch until the end of this video to find out. Let's take a look at the first breach in our defenses, livestock. For millions of years, humans didn't need to worry too much about diseases because they'd left most of them behind in the rainforests. However, things took a 180 degree turn when we started rearing livestock. They essentially bridged the gap between wild animal pathogens and humans. As livestock was often herded into fields and cared for on farms, numerous opportunities emerged for the animals to come into contact with outside pathogens via dung, saliva, and other kinds of excretions. As a result of close contact with our livestock, those pathogens naturally moved onto us. In fact, most diseases that pose a serious threat to humanity have traveled from wild animals to livestock to humans. MERS, which spread to 27 countries through the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia, is contracted from camels, which were also likely infected by bats. And the novel influenza virus that emerged in 2009 was spread from migrating birds to chickens and ducks, and then to humans. The brain-damaging Nipah virus was first contracted by humans when a large bat scoured a pig farm looking for some mangoes. The virus hopped to the pigs and then to humans. What's interesting is that other than with primates, who are genetically similar to us, the chances of a human being infected with a pathogen from another species is very low. The reason for that is the species barrier. From a pathogen's perspective, jumping straight from bats to humans is way too big a genetic leap for it to infect us easily. However, if it makes a pit stop in some livestock, things get much easier. Wild birds and bats are genetically much closer to chickens and pigs than they are to humans, generally making it easier for a virus to infect them. With the pathogen residing in livestock, it has many more chances to evolve a way to jump over the species barrier. And take note, humanity's agriculture and densely populated society is making these pathogens stronger. UC Riverside professor Sang Hee Lee proposes that pathogens have grown more lethal since the hunter-gatherer days. In those days, there were far fewer people around for pathogens to infect. Pathogens generally elected to live with their hosts for a long time, within weaker systems. Human hosts are of no use to a pathogen dead. After all, to cause stronger symptoms would risk killing their host. However, with the rise of agricultural society, human populations grew quite large, making such cautions unnecessary. Not only that, but water reservoirs made for farming can provide habitats for malaria harboring mosquitoes. And what's even more unbelievable is that medical technology may be laying the foundation for new pathogens in the future. You may have heard of super bacteria, but today we're talking about a different bomb. When a person needs a new organ, it's possible to transplant from a pig with its autoimmune response deactivated. But there's a catch. 
The pig could be infected with a virus. This virus would normally be dormant, hidden in the pig's DNA, making it very, very difficult to remove. Recently, we've gotten much better at using genetic scissor technologies, like CRISPR, to remove viruses. However, there are still some risks, namely the accidental damaging of the pig's DNA during the cutting process. If we transplanted a pig's organs into a person with the virus still intact, it could activate within them. Utilizing different ingredients found within the human body, the virus could build itself a form that allows it to be active. Then, it could attack. Currently, the Food and Drug Administration states that there is a high chance that this virus could infect humans. Now then, let's look at HIV, AIDS. This virus, which shook the whole world, came from a different strain, SIV, which could only infect primates. One day, it jumped from them to us, and the rest is history. Commercializing interspecies organ transplants could cause something similar by introducing unknown viruses into our bodies that we may have no treatments for. Now, this isn't to say that there's a problem with developing medical technology in and of itself. Rather, it is vital to understand that new medical technology can sometimes breed new illnesses. So, we need to be vigilant and tread carefully and responsibly. And it would be good if we came up with solutions together, right? In the last six years, we have discovered over 1,100 new diseases. But can we blame the pathogens? Human activity is making it much easier for viruses to get pulled into this mess. While in the past, humans evolved to distance themselves from pathogens, a few short centuries of livestock rearing, farming, and medical development seem to have shrunk that distance considerably. Is now not a good time to take a step back and think of ways to put a good amount of distance between us once again. Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you.